To you, this is a can of beer, but to me, it's a problem in search of a solution, and it's become my obsession. From the dictionary, a disturbing, persistent disturbing preoccupation with an often unreasonable idea. Yep, I've spent the last three years compulsively fixated on the beer can. I'm an aerospace insurance underwriter by day, but by night, I'm Tony Stark, the comic book legend who invented a suit of armor and became Iron Man. Except I'm not Robert Downey Jr. or Rich, and I work out of a peach-colored basement, not a high-tech man cave. I enjoy my job, but it's not my passion. As a kid, I was always taking things apart to see how they worked. At nine, I wired a portable TV to the cigarette outlet in the family station wagon, and when it wouldn't start, my parents needed to have a real mechanic come to the house to fix it. My windshield wiper glasses, powered by a toy car motor, were unsuccessfully goofy. And at 14, I connected a friend's TV remote to the light switch on the wall of his home and blew the breaker. <laughs> Thankfully, I had another passion worth pursuing, aviation. I've always been inspired by the invention of the Wright brothers, so I got my pilot license at an early age and then went to aircraft mechanics school. And then I got hired to do what I still do today. Still, whenever I'd see a simple innovation, I'd think, why didn't I think of that? We all have those moments, right? For me, each of those proverbial slaps on the forehead stung, for they rekindled the dream of being an inventor. I kept trying and failing. I cut a perfectly good jet ski in half to build a speedboat inside a tiny shed, only to realize I didn't have the resources or space to complete the project. I also discovered that two trolling motors rigged to a jet pump cannot propel a human on a surfboard. <laughs> Nor can seven circular saw motors. Ah, the sweat and toil I sacrificed to the nautical sciences. Which leads me to an actual seaworthy boat I was on four years ago. It was a hot summer day off the coast of New Jersey. Someone handed me this can of craft beer. <laughs> Could have used that earlier, actually. <laughs> I opened it and I thought, wow, this is pretty good. Too bad it's in a can. More quality brews come in cans these days. Convenient blessing on boats, but an old factory curse. Because to drink from this, you put your snout up against the aluminum, which smells like, well, aluminum. 70% of taste comes from smell. That's why you can't taste bacon when you're all stuffed up and why good beer tastes better when your nose is inside the container holding it. Hmm, that's an interesting problem, I thought. Three years later, thousands of strangers gave me almost a quarter of a million dollars to solve it. How that happened shows how technology now allows anyone to become a maker. My solution was simple, a can opener. I figured I could take features from that old-fashioned kitchen device and build from there. I began with things I had laying around the house. Wannabe inventors never throw anything away. But I quickly realized I was going to need more precise parts. That means mechanical drawings. I have notebooks full of drawings, but I needed measurements the width of a human hair. So I got to Google, where I found SketchUp, software that allows any knucklehead to design things. And then I Googled some more to find somebody to convert my drawings into part files, and then a machine shop to make the parts. Remember a Christmas story where Ralph is anxiously awaiting his secret decoder ring? Well, that was me every day, waiting for my parts. Five weeks later, they arrive. Step by step, I assemble them, adjusting as I go. And then I soak myself with beer from the can my invention mangled. I fall into a funk. It might qualify as clinical depression if I had enough money for a psychiatrist after spending $600 on useless metal parts. <laughs> I resolved to move on from this stupid idea. A couple days later, I see an article in a magazine about the exploding craft beer in a can movement. I'm back in the game. What I need is financial and moral support. Enter Sean Kelly. He's a new guy in my office. Like me, he's had money-making ideas that didn't work. And he loves beer. So I pitched my invention to him. Now, it already bounces off numerous friends and family, and I got nothing. I love you, man, they said, but this idea ain't going anywhere. But I had a vision on a boat, and Sean buys it hook, line, and sinker. With Sean on board, I designed new versions, explain them to him, get quotes, order parts, and tinker more times than I can count. After three years, we were ready to determine if there was a demand for what we could supply, and for that, we needed Kickstarter, the crowdfunding website. Now, you can't post any harebrained idea on Kickstarter. They have a process to weed out get-rich-quick schemes. So we made a video and submitted our product. A couple days later, Kickstarter had accepted our application. Our goal was 75,000, and to get the word out, we used social media and stunts from other failed ideas. It worked. We pre-sold 4,200 beer can openers to 3,200 backers worldwide. They gave us $214,000, and soon they will be enjoying their craft beers properly, their snout-sniffing beer, not aluminum. 
I can now call myself an inventor and devise a simple solution to a common problem. I propelled it forward by partnering with an equally passionate friend. We honed and financed it by tapping into the world's knowledge via technology unavailable just a decade ago. All you need is a good idea worth sharing. Thank you.